What's up, y'all? What's up? I might put y'all on my ring light. What are you doing? We're doing Instagram Live. What's up, y'all? We're not going to start this tonight, devil. No. No. No, devil. No, folk. Hallelujah! Y'all know I'm aggravating, so I might as well get used to it from right now. Thank you, guys. I'm trying to get this ring light situated. I should have did this before, but I'm working right now at the same time. Babysitting kids and trying to do this live and put this on the ring light. I'm sorry, y'all. It's too much. Am I nose ring out my nose? Okay, we're just going to hold the phone. Hey, Amen. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing today on a scale of 1 to 10? Kiddos, how y'all doing today on the scale of one to ten? Hey guys, hi beautiful people. Y'all can hear me. Y'all can see me. All good. Before I get started, a three. Why? Oh no, not a three. Ten. Okay. Ten. I'm feeling the tens. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Ten. Seven, okay. Eight. I feel that. I think mine was more of an eight. Ten because we're glad you're all right. Eight. Thank you. I'm at the slide there. Where? Ten. We all alive. Amen to that. Huh? Put the dog up. Put Dylan. You don't have to hold the dog and watch the kids at the same time. Put him. Put the dog in the green thing. What does he have? I'm sorry, y'all. He's still <laughs> ten. That's good. You got a whole daycare over there. Listen, no phone, okay? No phone. You're gonna have to sit down and play with the toys. All right, y'all. I'm about to get started. Huh? Okay. Grateful. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad you're okay. Thank y'all. So I'm about to get started. Lincoln, please. Who is that? Who is that? It's Instagram Live. You want to come say hi? Come over here. Okay. All right, y'all. See, I know the Lord is good and worthy to be praised. Why Pastor's about to come right now. Now? Yep. Okay. Pastor said he's coming down. Um, the I Lord is good. You like your dad? Oh my gosh. <laughs> See, come on. Oh. It's real life. All right, so today we are going to talk miracles. Say miracles. Miracles. Signs. Signs. And wonders. Wonders. Yes. Good job. Good job. Okay, y'all. So, gee, she sound like, oh my gosh, are y'all serious? No, we're not doing that, okay? We're going to leave these on for my Instagram video. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Hey, girl. All right, y'all. So, as you all know, the Lord has been blowing my mind. I forgot I should have got started because I'm going to save this lie. Hopefully, they just fast forward, you know. But recently, the Lord has been blowing my mind. Like, okay. So, all I can say is the end of 2022... He really is a keeper in real life. And y'all, throughout this thing, y'all can ask questions, like hit the little question thing. And ask, like, as I'm telling the story, you can ask whatever, because at the end, I'm going to answer all the questions. But don't do it on the live as a comment, because I'm not going to be able to scroll all the way back. Just do it as a question, so at the end, um, I can swipe through it. Listen, I'm mad I wiped my whole face Sunday testament. Are you serious? <laughs> if you like that, I'm glad y'all were here. So, yeah, if you were at Liv, you probably already heard the story, but wiped it off. Girl, I know what you meant. I already know what you meant. But, yeah, so basically, the end of the year, um, if you were at Liv Church on Sunday, you uh, saw this amazing woman of God named Jenny Weaver. She's like a deliverance minister, a pastor, just an amazing person all around, a mentor, all of that. And um, 
we went, she has conferences, so she doesn't have a church open. She does uh, conferences. So she had a conference at the end of December, or close, like I'll say the middle of December. And my mom went one night, and she just went because one of our friends from the church invited my mom to this, um, to the deliverance service or whatever. So my mom went one night, not knowing where she's about to go. She just, you know, promised him she'll go. So she kept her promise and ended up going to the conference. And she told, she came back home like, yo, that was something I've never experienced before. Like, she was like, it was an amazing, like, encounter with God and all of that. And I'm just like, hmm, okay, cool. But I've recently been having a drive for, you know, things in the ministry. Like, I've recently been wanting to go to different conferences and stuff like that, just to be in a spirit, just to experience new things. Because I go to church every Sunday and Wednesday, but, you know, just to experience new things. So I would go with her to the conference the next night. As soon as... As we walked through the two doors of like the room they're in, as soon as love you too, as soon as we walked through those two doors, I felt the presence of the Lord. I was just like, "Oh, this, this ain't nothing to play with." I walked in there like, "Oh, okay." I was just like, I didn't know the lady. I didn't know what she looked like. I didn't know anything going on. I just walked in there and I was like, "Oh, okay." So it was a beautiful. Um, a beautiful service and I watched um Jenny Weaver and this lady named Natalie just you know lay hands on people and people like become free like literally I seen demons getting casted out of people like demons manifest like manifesting and then being casted out like I witnessed it on my own two eyes I always watch it on YouTube and stuff because I'm interested in it but I've seen it with my own eyes and I was like that's what I want to do like I don't know if y'all know I went through depression this year I went through a whole lot of different things struggled with certain addictions this year and when I went to that conference I was like oh that's why I'm sitting here depressed because I'm not walking towards nothing on my purpose you feel me that's a that's the thing if you're feeling depressed or feeling down low it's probably because you're not working towards what God created you for anyways thank you so much I will say this live for y'all who can't stay Oh, I know I'm taking a long ride, but it's going to be worth it when you hear the whole story, to be honest. It's a full circle. But, so yeah, so we go to the conference, and I'm just watching, like, this is what I want to do. This is what I, I feel like I'm made for, what I was created for. And in during the service, I seen this lady with a pink suit on, and I guess she preached the night before, but I didn't know. And I said, I said, I need her to pray for me. I just said that in, I, in my head. And I was just like, I need her to pray for me. And she was like, and she, I was like, but I'm not going to do the most. I'm not going to walk up to her or anything, whatever. So at the end, they're all laying hands on everybody. And she's just so full of the spirit. Like, she was, like, drunk in the spirit. The lady in the pink suit laying hands on people. People are getting free. And I'm just like, dang, I really wanted her to pray for me, but it's okay or whatever. So she's, like, full of the spirit, drunk. It's like five people carrying her back to her seat, right? And mind you, she has to pass my seat for her to get to her seat. So as she's going and um, passing her seat full of the spirit, um, our arm was out, like, in my reach, right? And I'm standing on top of my chair. That's how lit the conference was. I'm literally standing on my chair, jumping in this full of the spirit, right? And I just say, you know, let me just go for it. I just want to at least touch her hand. Like, she don't have to pray for me or nothing. I just want to grab her hand and, and get whatever I can from that while she's going back to her seat, right? She's walking by. I reached out for that lady's hand. She was like this. She came right back. She looked me dead in my eyes, and she was like, in the name of... That lady laid hands on me for her hair on my head, and I felt the fire of the Lord. Like, I felt electricity going through my whole body. I was like, wow! I was born. I went crazy. I was getting free. I was getting free. I will never, ever, ever forget that moment in my life. Because I just wanted to grab her hand. I wasn't expecting her to nothing. I knew she was done. She came in, and she was like, she grabbed my hand. She backed up like, whoa! and went back and prayed for me and backed up like, Whoa. I was like, girl, I feel that too. I feel that too. What is that? Oh my gosh. It was amazing. <sighs> Sorry. Anyways. So that was, that was a, a powerful moment for me. I got free from a lot that night. Um, I felt things come off of me. I left there floating. She said she getting chills all over again, right? For real, because I told y'all the day after, I told y'all. Man, I felt so light and so free. I felt like can't no devil in hell look at me. It can't even come my way. Don't play with me. Boy, you don't know who I am. Anyways, that's how I was feeling after that. I was like, yeah, yeah. Anyways, 
so I'm just happy every day after that. I was just, I just had a certain level of joy and I just knew what my purpose was. And that was a certain level of freedom as well. Thank you so much. Thank y'all so much. So yeah, after that conference, right? We leave for a, a, a family vacation. We had the best vacation of our lives. We, we, we went to a nine course meal restaurant. We seen views. I seen views I never seen in my life. I took some dope pictures. I just spent time with my family and my homegirl Gabby was with me, you know, just good vibes, right? So we get back home. I'm telling y'all the, this story the longest way possible. Yes. So either you want to stay or you going to listen later. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I get, um, so we get back to Orlando we are, and we're in the airport, right? Chilling in the airport. My girl Gabby's like, my, so, mind y'all, years ago when I first got my car, I named my car Miracle. Okay? Now. All right. I named my car Miracle when I first got it because I just wasn't expecting to get it that day. We went to the lot and left with it, and I was like, that's a miracle. Miracle is her name. But I don't know, I actually don't know if me or my homegirl Jazz or my sister Poodle made it up, but okay, it's not Anyways, so, so anyways, we're at the um, airport and me and my girl was like, how long you have Miracle again? I said, I think I had Miracle like two years. I think I had it for like two years or whatever. She was like, oh, that's crazy. It's been two years already or whatever. And my dad just there being nosy like, who's Miracle? And I'm like, dang, Miracle the name of my car or whatever, whatever. So that was a cool moment. Like, yeah, the Miracle's the name of my car. We're at the airport. So we leave the airport. We get back home. And I get in Miracle. I get in my car. I had somewhere. I forgot where I was going. Maybe the store. I don't know. I was getting in my car. And all I know is there's this dirt road. Like, so we live in the middle of nowhere. We live in Claremont in the middle of nowhere. There's land. My dad got seven acres of land. There's a lake behind us. And to get back to in the city, you have to go through this. Well, you don't have to go through the dirt road, but that's the shortcut. And that's the way we go every time. It's this real bumpy dirt road, right? And the dirt road leads to a back street, and a back street leads to the main road. So on the dirt road and on the back street, there are no lights at all. No street lights, no nothing. So I'm on the dirt road, boop, 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 boop. I'm chilling, I'm driving, and I hit this don't on the dirt road, and I'm like, ooh, that was a close one. Keep driving, thank you, Jesus. It's a lot of bumps, it happens a lot. It happens to everybody who goes to that dirt road. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all, I get off of the dirt road, right? Soon as I get off the dirt road and I'm on that back road, the back street before the main street, I get on that dark road and I look down, y'all, for one second. I know I wasn't plugging in my phone. I know it wasn't um, anything like that. And, hold on, mind y'all, before I left the house, I'm leaving the driveway and I hear the spirit tell me, <laughs> not that was a close one, no, for real. I was like, ooh, okay. Um, I hear the spirit tell me, put that seatbelt on, okay? Because I cannot lie, I don't do it every single time, but that has changed. Thank you, Jesus. So I hear the spirit tell me put the seatbelt on. I put the seatbelt on, whatever. Go through dirt road. Ooh, that was a close one, whatever. I get off of that dirt road, y'all. I get onto the back street. And it's, I guess it was a pile of asphalt, but my dad took a video too. If you go down that road, you cannot see it until you're right at it. So I'm just, yeah, you can't see it at all, but I have witnesses. You cannot see it. So we're, I'm driving and I look down for one second, y'all. I hit this, I hear this big, boom. It was the biggest don't I've ever heard in my life and I'm like oh I'm like whoa I'm shooken up y'all while my car starts to flip all the way over if you see the pile I'll post the pile too it looks like a pile of dirt so even if I did see it, I wouldn't have thought that it would affect me that hard or like I would have thought I can just you know like you know drive through it it looks like a pile of dirt if anything man y'all I had this big don't and I'm like whoo Jesus then I realized that my whole car is flipping and it goes doom y'all then it goes doom then it goes doom then it goes doom then it goes doom and i'm in that ah! y'all after the second door because there's a lake nearby too jesus saved my life jesus saved my life there's a lake across the street as well y'all i could have flipped into that lake and drowned i don't think y'all get how how crazy this story is. Y'all, I flipped probably four or five times, guys. And by the second flip, I'm just like, oh, I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to die. It's just how it happens. Like when people panic right before they die, I'm like, oh my gosh, is this the moment? Like, which one is gonna be my last flip? I started to think that after a while. And y'all, by the time that third or fourth one came, I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Jesus saved me right now. I started yelling, like, Jesus save me. 
Like, I'm yelling, and I see the glass, this glass breaking. The windshield's coming closer. Like, that's breaking. Boy, I'm watching everything fall apart and get twisted up, and it's just doom, doom. And I'm like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, it's not enough to just think it. You have to open your mouth no matter what you're going through. I'm flipping in a car and I opened my mouth and cried out. Glass could have gotten my mouth. I could have I could have choked on glass. You never know. Man, I said, Jesus save me. By the time I said that, I stopped flipping. I was just upside down, y'all. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all, so I'm, I leaned it upside down, right? And, um, ooh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So I lean it upside down, and I'm just hanging. I'm hanging, right? I got my seatbelt on. I'm hanging. And I feel all the blood rush into my head, y'all. I feel all the blood rush into my head. And I'm like, oh, my God, I hope I don't pass out, right? So, I'm so sorry. I'm glad you're okay. Thank you so much. Thank y'all so much. Y'all, I'm hanging upside down in that car, and I'm just like, I'm stuck. Like, y'all didn't cry or nothing for a minute. It took me a minute to, I, actually, I didn't cry till I saw my dad, but that's fast forward. Anyways, y'all, I'm hanging upside down from the car, and I start peeping the horn. I'm like, beep, 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 till I ain't have no more strength because mind you i'm hanging so i can't it's not the same as me sitting like i'm hanging so the blood all that rushing from my head and there's a neighborhood across the street from me so i was hoping that me people in the horn somebody would come out of their house and see my car upside down smoking anyways jesus so i'm people in the horn i lost strength and i'm just like oh my gosh i just need to find my phone because i need to call my dad now after the beeping the horn all i'm thinking is find that phone and call your dad so I um I end up unbuckling my seatbelt, and when I unbuckled my um, it's okay to cry. Yeah, I already know. I already know it's okay to cry. But in the moment, I'm trying to figure out what to do. I didn't even think cry, child. So I'm I unbuckled the seatbelt and I landed on what's it called the um sunroof sunroof. Yeah, I landed on the sunroof or whatever. And mind you, I banged my face on the wheel when I first hit it, so my whole lip is busted open. So all I see is blood and stuff on the um. Where the mirror thing is, is, what's that called? The mirror thing, whatever. Where that thing is, all I see is blood, and I'm just like, I don't even know what's wrong with me. All I know is I gotta find that phone and call my dad, okay? So, okay, so I'm, I, I, I'm looking, I landed on the top, I'm looking around for my phone, looking everywhere, trying to touch around for my phone, through the glass, through the airbags, just looking around for my phone, right? Could not find my phone. So, y'all, my car calls me somehow. My car ends up calling me i guess it's like the what y'all call it the sos or the on star yeah. thank you take your time babes thank you because i'm trying to like keep going because i know i'm talking i'm taking it slow but it's okay so yeah the, so my car calls me y'all and said hello are you in danger in the calmest voice it's not a machine it's a real lady she said hello are you in danger and i was like i'm upside down y'all like, I've never experienced this before in my life. Like, I'm like, I'm upside down. Yeah, on star. Yeah, thank you. I said, I, don't, I said, my car, I, I hit something. I landed upside down. I said, oh, my God. I said, ma'am, Jesus saved my life. I said, I screamed Jesus, and he saved my life. And I couldn't even hear. I don't even know what she was saying back to me at the time. I just knew that I had to tell somebody how Jesus saved my life. So I told the lady, I said, I'm looking around for my phone. I can't find my phone. She said, okay, do you want me to call your phone? I can call your phone. Y'all, her voice was so calm like so calm and she told me okay just keep taking deep breaths so you won't pass out if she wasn't saying that i probably would have passed out about three times already and who knows what would have happened after that so i'm looking around my phone for my phone and i'm still scared that i love you too th i love you so so much i'm looking around for my phone oh yeah so she said you want me to call your phone she calls my phone. She says, I'm sorry. It's going straight to voicemail. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Okay, okay. So I'm like, let me just try to get out this car. Because if I keep looking up and see that my seats are on top of me, I'm going to lose my mind. Uh-huh. So I say I need to get out this car. So I try to um, open my door, but my door is jammed. So I'm kicking my door. I'm pushing my door. I'm hitting it so hard with all the strength I have left in me, y'all. Mind you, my heart is racing. 
So I don't have that much strength. I'm trying to open the door. The door will not open. I'm like, oh my God, this thing is jammed. How am I about to get out this car? And is this car going to catch on fire? What is about to happen to me right now? I need to get out. I just need to get out. So, um, yeah, so I'm just trying to, um, yeah, trying to find a way out of the car. So I'm just looking around trying to find my phone or find a way out. And I just feel outside, like while I'm uh, touching around, I feel the street outside. Somehow, some way, I felt the street. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I lifted up that airbag and I seen this little, tiny little space that I can get out from. I don't know if you've seen the video I just posted on Instagram. But if you look at the window on the driver's side, there was a little black thing that had this little space right there. I can't explain it. If you see it, you probably know what I'm talking about. And I think I could put the picture on the live, right? It can be behind me. I should have screenshotted it before I started. But yeah, it's this little part. It go back on my Instagram and look at it after this. This little part of the window. And y'all, I had to climb. I had to crawl out of that tiny part that y'all saw. I had to crawl out of that. So you know I had to be... um like stomach flat on the ground and just push myself out basically through the glass through all of that y'all i don't got no glass things on my stomach or nothing i got out of there i had a two-piece on so it's a um it's a sweatsuit but it's a crop top the top is a crop top so press the picture button let me try um and maybe a few things you can grab yeah, yeah. Y'all can see it, right? Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah. I was crying. Mm. <laughs> Y'all see that little, oh, that part right there? Yeah. With the bandies. It, 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 I was going yeah. like that. I, mm -hmm. I crawled out of that little spot right there. My phone in there, but I'm not yeah, sure that where. little hole. I crawled out of that. Y'all want the 411. And we can't open the doors. Okay. So y'all get it, get the, okay, get the gist. It's kind of cool. I never did that. <laughs> Anyways. But yeah, so I had to, yeah, so it was that little space. I had to crawl out of that. And yeah, I made it out of the car, y'all. And I just see all, I always like have all my clothes. Wait a minute. What a moment. Exactly. Um, yeah, that moment was something special. My mom was like, give me a hug. I was like, <laughs> then I snapped out of it like, hey, bro, where my phone at? Because I know it's in this car still. Anyways, thank you, cousin. Um, yeah, only only a week remain door for a night. Look, I ain't crying too long. Thank you, Jesus. Only one night. Uh, eh, 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 eh. Anyways, but yeah, so I got in the car. I see all my stuff on the street. I have so much stuff in my trunk all the time. If you know me and know my car, I have so much stuff in my trunk. So I see it all. I see it all on the ground outside. Like, so I'm just going through that. Like, maybe my phone. Um those phones okay maybe my phone is in here so i'm throwing everything yo hey what they do i'm throwing everything like uh -uh, i need to find this phone y'all i need to call my dad because my dad still don't know and i've been in here trying to find the phone for about 10 minutes so the lady in the car mind you she's still talking to me but i keep ignoring her there's several times where i just ignore her for a long time because i'm still in shock and i had to come back and be like oh what you say whatever so i ended up giving her my dad's phone number. She called, tried to call him twice. He didn't answer. So now I'm just panicking more like, oh my gosh, my dad still don't know. And I'm just out here, man. So it's a shocking moment. I know it really did try to get me. So yeah, so I'm trying to find my phone still. My dad didn't answer. So I keep crawling in and out the car because I couldn't stay in the car and try to find my phone because I, every time I looked up, I almost passed out. And every time I see the blood, I almost passed out. So I kept crawling in and out, in and out, in and out, trying to figure something out, trying to get the lady to keep calling my dad. I said, can you text him? I'm sorry, ma'am. We can't text him, Bob. I'm like, ma'am, but I'm about to die. Like, grab your phone. I'm not about to die, clearly, but I'm just being extra. I'm like, grab your phone and text my dad. He's not going to answer. He's a celebrity. He don't answer random calls. You got to tell him it's Austin or whatever. So... <laughs> So, oh, uh, yeah, so she said she couldn't text him. I'm like, okay, whatever. Thank you, Lord. A car is just coming down that back road for some reason. I just seen the car coming. I waved the car down. They kept driving. So I'm like, what the? And I watched him, and they was actually making a U-turn to come back around the park behind me. I'm like, oh, okay. But as they're making a the U-turn, there's this other car that comes by. And I wave her down, too. And she just stopped right there. She didn't go make the U-turn. She's, yeah. So she stopped. And she was like, bro, I went down now, like, 
Oh my God. Oh my God. She jealous. I just ran to her car. Yeah, not for some reason that was God. Okay, there were two angels that came down that road. This lady, she had four kids in her back seat, bro. I felt so bad. But she stopped me and I said, She said, Did you just come out of that? Because she see my car upside down. I said, Yes. I said, Jesus saved my life. I said, I was flipping. I said, I probably flipped five times. And I said, I was crying out to Jesus. I said, Jesus name me. He saved me. I said, Jesus saved my life, ma'am. She looked at me like, she didn't say n nothing. She was just like, and her baby just like just looking at me like, and I'm just like, so yeah, can I use your phone? Like my dad still don't know what's going on. I don't think y'all get it. I need to see my dad so I can, cause I'm panicking y'all the whole time. I'm talking like this. Jesus, he saved my life. I'm I'm still like frant like frantic. Is that the word? Frantic? Y'all okay. <laughs> I'm still frantic, y'all. So. I, I ministered to her and told her how Jesus saved my life. And she's stuck. Like, she just like, oh, my gosh. So she gave me her phone. She just ain't say nothing. Gave me her phone. She just kept saying, oh, my gosh. So I um I called my dad twice. He didn't answer on that phone either. So I texted him. And I said, hey, Dad. I said, hey, Dad, it's Austin. Answer the phone. And I texted him again. And I said, I crashed. So then I, uh, then I, then he called me back. It's like as soon as I sent that message, he called me right back, and he was like, "It's freezing. Y'all can hear me? Yeah. Yeah, they can. Okay. So my dad was like, "Where are you? Like that? I just heard his voice say, "Where are you? Y'all? That's when I let out." Every tear that I was holding in since I first hit that pound, busted my lip. I was like, damn, oh my gosh, y'all don't understand the feeling I felt when I heard his voice, oh my gosh, I felt, oh, I can't explain, I just felt like, okay, everything is going to be okay, good luck, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, I'm good, okay, we can hear you, okay, good, keep going, we hear you, you're not freezing, okay, good, 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 good stuff, good stuff, so, I'm just like, oh my God, I really am with daddy's girl, I'm sorry, y'all, I was like, oh, everything's going to be okay, so I was like, <laughs> I told him, I said, I'm right near the house. I just got off the dirt road. We come in the street. He said, okay, okay, okay. Where, where at? Just now I'm talking to him. I'm still panicking. He told me I got to calm down. Or I'm going to pass out. So dads are so, so important. So important. A, them mixed with God brings a whole different level of comfort, of safety, of peace. A whole, I heard his voice and that's when I felt like I can cry. Like I can be, you know, my, a child. Shoot. Shoot. Yeah, I, I was a child in that moment, but I was scared. So, yeah, so, yeah, so my dad's like, where are you? Explain it to me. Explain it to me. I tried to explain it to him. Then I was trying to send the current location on the lady's phone, right? And the lady was like, I'm sorry. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to send it. Y'all, her little baby's only five years old. Like, it's okay, mom. I know how to do it. I can help her. Like that. And I was just like, oh, because if y'all know me, y'all know how I am about babies. And had you found your phone, you would have answered the first time. I remember him saying, no matter what he's doing, he promised he'll answer if you call. Yes, that's big fast. That's why. Why do you think I took the phone? What's up, that connection, bro? Is it's back on? Um, yes. So, it said, so yeah, he, but I was trying to find it that long because I knew he'll answer me quicker than any other phone. But it was like, all right. So he answered. He um he was on the he was on the way to me. He told me stay on the phone because as I was talking to him, the police pulled up because my car called the police for me. So the police pulled up and came to me and said, "Hello, man. Whatever. I don't even know what she said. To the second, I don't know what that lady said. I just not wait on my dad to get there. Dad, where you at, broski? So yeah, he um he got to me after a while. I was talking to the police. I still don't know. I can't remember a word I said to them or what they said to me for a minute. Um, and, uh, my dad got there and by the time he got there, it was police and fire trucks out there. So it was a whole lot going on. So my dad, I, he, he, he has so much of a calm spirit on him. I cannot explain it. Like it was a peace. It was a peace. Dad, where you at? Okay. Come on, bro. So he got there. He got there real quick and he came with my older cousin, Kaboo, that lives with us. So he came, they both came. What up? Hey, yo. Good to see uh, see you twin, even though I don't really see you, but good to see you twin. Um, so 
Yeah, so my dad got there and I, I ran to him. I ran to him and I was like, I'm so sorry. That's the first thing I said. I said, I'm so sorry. And he was hugging me. He said, uh-uh, 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 no, no, no. He said, don't say sorry. He rubbed my back. He said, I don't care. I don't care. He said, I don't care where you were going. He said, I don't care. He said, I don't care right now. I won't care tomorrow. I won't care the next day. I will never care. He said, I don't care. I don't care. Oh, my God, y'all. Oh, I can feel the spirit just talking about it. And I'm rocking because he was rocking when he said it. And that was just a great moment, y'all. Y'all don't get it. Sound just like him. Yes. He said, I don't care. I don't care. And I was just like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He said, stop saying sorry, whatever. He said, who cares about that car? That's a piece of, that's metal. That's a, that's something man man. You think I care about that car? Girl, he was like, I love you. He said, you alive. He said, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. He started going and he said, my daughter's alive. Thank you, Jesus. He rubbing my back. Y'all, we still outside rocking in the police. It's all the police just standing there waiting on us to be done so they can ask me 10 kajillion questions. Anyways, speaking of, hey. So I was telling the moment where you had, when I finally saw you and I was just hugging and you told me like, it's okay. Like, I don't care. I don't care right now. I won't care tomorrow. And that just, when I tell y'all I can breathe, when he said that, I felt like I can breathe again. Oh my gosh. I was like, thank you, D-Lo. I appreciate you. Bro, I, I was like, oh my gosh, I can breathe again, y'all. So after that, he gave me, he took his jacket off and gave me, hey, mom. So, yeah, y'all, why my dad didn't tell my mom? He just ran out the house. He didn't even tell my mom where he was going. That's kind of funny, though, but it's okay. <laughs> Anyways, but um, thank God for him. What? Fathers, you, man, y'all don't even know how important it is. As a daughter, I'm telling y'all how important it is to just be there. But, yeah, but, um, yeah, so, okay. So, the police came up to us. Perfection of the love of God it was. Ooh, God, because he don't care. He doesn't care right now. He wouldn't care tomorrow. He already knew 2,000 years ago when he died for you what you was about to do. You spending your time guilty. You waste. Man. I rebuke the spirit of guilt right now. If anybody on this live is uh, suffering with guilt or anything like that. That got to go right now in the name of Jesus. I speak against any spirit of guilt that's trying to attack anybody's minds or anybody's heart or take over anybody's day or is taking anybody's sleep. I rebuke that right now in the name of Jesus. I speak freedom. I speak wholeness. I speak peace. I speak love. I speak the comfort of God. Okay? In the name of Jesus. No more guilt. I done suffered with guilt. Guilt done had me depressed for so long. I wish I would let that thing sneak back up on me. Yeah, okay. We renounce the spirit of guilt right now in the name of Jesus. But yeah, back to the story now. If you receive it, say I receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, but um, yeah, so I got, so uh, yeah, so, okay, y'all, I got hype. I don't know. Somebody just give me hype. Okay, but yeah, so my dad gave me his jacket. I was shivering a little piece, so scared, lip bleeding, okay, thank you, Lord. So the cops sat me on the curb or whatever. And the firefighter, whatever, came to me. I never been in a situation like this. I never get sick. I never go through nothing. Like I don't go through like hard things, to be honest. So it's like I, I go through hard things, but this was just it was just different. Y'all feel me? Y'all get it? Y'all get it? I never been in a hospital before in my life. Nothing. So it was just different. I never seen firefighters that close. I'm just like, what's going on? So yeah, amen. Good. I'm so happy y'all received that. Thank you, Jesus. But, um, yeah, so they was checking my vitals or whatever, and they said, okay, I just need you to calm down, breathe slow or whatever, and I'm just calming down. And they're, they're like, wow, everything's normal. Whoa, that's different. Everything's normal, whatever. So they're like, okay, well, um, we're going to take you to the hospital. Are you comfortable going to the hospital? And then I said, I kind of don't want to go to the hospital. You don't go to physical sickness. You don't go to physical sickness or things like that. Right, mom? I don't go through that. I really don't. I never go through real like physical sickness. But, um, yeah, so I was on the curb, and they were just like, you want to go to the hospital? I'm like, no. I really, at that point, I saw my dad, and I was ready to see my mom. I want to see my mom. So I'm like, no, I want to go home, right? So they're like, okay, well, okay. So they kind of ignored me. And then they said, okay, well, we got to ask you a few questions. What's your full name? 
I said, Austin Taylor tribute. My dad said, thank you, Jesus. Like, he would just have me. I was remembering things. And they were like, when were you born? I said, October 15th, blah, blah. My dad was like, thank you, Jesus, or whatever. And then they just asked me a couple more questions about me just to make sure I didn't have a concussion. And I was good. I'm trying, I said, I told you, I'm good. And they was like, okay, cool. They said, okay, now I'm going to need you to remember this number. They said, seven. Did you look the way did something? He said, okay, what number did I tell you? And I said, seven. And mind y'all, what's seven? The Lord's number, right? Okay, that's a whole nother miracle added on because I'm sure they want to think about that. Thank you, Jesus. But yeah, so they were like, okay, well, we're going to call the ambulance and basically um, just take you to the doctor just so you can check on everything because you never know. You won't really feel it until the next day or whatever, whatever. And my dad had walked away and started recording stuff, but he walked... He walked back when they said they're calling the ambulance and stuff. My dad was like, hold on, hold on, did you ever consent to go to the hospital? And I was like, no. And he was like, right. And he was like, okay, so you don't want to go to the hospital? I said, no, I do not want to go. Seven means perfection. Wow. That's crazy. But yeah, so, um, yeah, so I was like, no, I don't want to go to the hospital. Whatever. They was like, okay, well, we're going to have to have you sign this form. Or whatever, okay, so I signed the form, but it was like, okay, now I need you to walk us through what happened. Y'all wanna know what I said to them people? <laughs> Jesus saved my life. Jesus saved my life. I said I was flipping and I said Jesus and he saved my life. That's what happened. It was like, oh no, I mean, I need you to walk us through what actually happened. Like, did you hit something? Did you I said Jesus saved my life? My dad was like, Amen, amen, amen. Basically, like. She said what she said, and I don't keep asking her questions now. Jesus saved her life. That's the story. That's all she's going to tell everybody else. Leave it there, basically. But they just, you know, they had to do their job. You know, they had to write the report. They had to do all that. And I get it. But I just couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't, I couldn't even think about anything. I didn't know I hit that pile. Like, how I'm telling y'all, I hit the pile, I flipped, all of that. I didn't know all of that in the moment. I just knew Jesus saved my life in that moment. I didn't know nothing. I, I'm telling y'all, I'm not exaggerating right now. My dad, my cousin, and those police officers themselves will tell you that I did not know anything. I did not know anything else in the moment. Crazy, y'all. It's crazy. And it was like, well, Jesus, I said, Jesus saved my life. They said, yeah. They said, whoa, technically you do have a safety car. And the fact that your seatbelt on, um, the fact that your seatbelt on, it helped you from this and that. And that car was made to prevent this and this was made for that. And I, and I didn't even know he said all of that. All of that. My dad told me after the fact that he said all of that to me because I was looking at him dead in his eyes. But I was not there. I was wrapped in God's glory at the moment. Like I literally felt the presence from here to here. I couldn't think about nothing else. I was just like, uh-huh. I didn't even know he said that to my dad, to me or whatever. So, yeah, I signed the form. And they said, basically, like, if you leave and something breaks, that's not on us. If you die, it's not on us. And I'm like, yeah, all right. Watch me live and not die. Thank you, Jesus. So, yeah, so we had to sit in the car and wait for them to write out the report or whatever. And we were just in the car. And my dad's just holding me. And my dad's rocking. He sat in the back seat with me. And he was just rocking. And I just kept having these moments where I just started shaking, like, just, you know, traumatized for the moment. Like, I just get nervous, and I just start shaking. And he was praying. He was, like, grab my arm like this and pray that thing off, and I'll calm down again. I'll calm down, right? So we rocking, and he's praying. He's speaking in tongues. He's, like, the book, like going in. He's in tongues, like, this, thanking God. He's, I'm so happy you're alive. He's kissing my forehead, like, I'm just so happy you're alive. He said, God, save my daughter. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my daughter. I'm so happy you're alive. And I was just rocking. I was just, I heard everything, and I felt it. But then I was like, I said, Dad, I ain't going to lie. I said, I don't think I'll be able to sleep for a long time like that. And he, he ain't, my dad did not say a word back. I think he just went into the, like, he just prayed in the spirit when I said that. He was just rocking. He kept praying when I said that. Y'all, why he kept rocking and why I fell asleep on his chest? As soon as I said, I don't think I'll be able to sleep. <laughs> that devil just be lying. How you still lie right after? Like, what? So I'm rocking and I fell asleep. Then I woke back up, you know, I just fell asleep for probably three seconds, like for a little bit. Woke back up, but that was just proof. That was just God showing me, oh, you're going to rest now. Don't play with me. You're going to rest. So that was a beautiful moment, too, how as soon as I said that, um, I fell back asleep. So then he's rocking me again. I woke back up, and I just said, I'm so happy Lincoln wasn't in the car with me. Y'all, my little sister, her name is Lincoln. If y'all know me, y'all know how I am about my little sister. I would have lost I think God knows, like, I mean, he would have kept me through that, too. Thank you, Jesus. But he knows just what I can, 
he know what I can handle right now. And sometimes my little sister just hops in the car with me, bro. So I was just so happy. Bro, I just had a whole moment of crying. I just was like real life crying in his arms. Just grateful that my sister wasn't with me, bro. Oh, my God. That part meant, oh, my God. That meant so much to me. Like, God, that really meant a lot to me. It meant so, 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 so much to me. So, yeah, my little sister wasn't there, thank God, and whatever. So, we in the car. Police came back, gave us the stuff. And my dad, my dad, when he was rocking me, he was crying. I felt his tears. I'm like, oh! Anyways, I'm doing the most. Okay, but y'all, so I just took the longest, uh, longest way to tell that night, but... Yeah, so I got home. I walked as soon as I walked up the steps. You had to walk through like four steps until you get to the front door of my house. I got to that fourth step. I started busting out crying. I walked through my house so grateful. I was crying walking through the front doors, like crying, like bawling. My dad just rubbing my back. My dad was rubbing my back, holding me so extra, right? So extra, like. <laughs> so I was just, so I walked in the house. He rubbing my back and. I don't know if y'all can see, I got a couple cuts on my hand from the glass, from crawling in and out the car. Um, I had glass in my hand, so in the car he noticed, he made my cousin drive home and he just sat in the back seat with me, like holding me all the way home, got here, and we noticed that my whole hand was full of blood. He was like, oh, huh, that's crazy. <laughs> Maybe we should wash that off. So we went to the sink and my dad said I would just I was just wiping it off like, oh, it's not getting off fast enough. He looking at me like, how you just wiping and hitting your hand like that and it's full of blood? But it didn't hurt at all. I couldn't feel nothing. But they say when you're in shock, you can't feel anything. But my hand has never hurt, even since, yeah, like, it never hurt. So, I don't know. I was just wiping it off and I'm just good. My dad looking at me like, this is crazy. So... Uh, they walked me upstairs, and I ended up sleeping in my parents' room that night. I just, I actually haven't slept in my room since um, that night, since before that night. I haven't went back into my room and slept in there yet because I just didn't want anything familiar. When I tell y'all, I have not gone back to anything familiar since then. Like, I feel like as I was flipping, things were coming off of me. Like, I call it the glorious crash now. So as I'm flipping, I feel like addictions came off. I feel like fear, like certain things I feared on a normal, that came off. I feel like everything that wasn't like him just came off in a crash. Each flip, something else left. Y'all, I don't think y'all get it. <laughs> I don't think y'all get it. If y'all know me, y'all know this Austin is not the same Austin from before. At all, when I say at all, I feel like as I flip, things just came off. Oh my God, the spirit of lust, the spirit of pride, this all the man, all of that crap came off of me, boy. I experienced His glory. When you're face to face with His glory, when you witness His like His glory. You can't even go back if you wanted to. It's yeah, a deliverance flip. Like it's it's it was it was different. It was real different. So yeah, so I'm sorry. I know I'll give y'all chills, but it's good chills. Y'all feel the spirit of the Lord? That's good. But y'all, so yeah, so um I get home, I slept in my parents' room that night. The most peaceful sleep I've had probably this whole year. The night I crashed is the night I slept the most peaceful, y'all. I slept so peacefully. My dad, he cried probably two more times that night. And we was just worshiping the Lord together. They played this Christmas special for King and Country. Had a Christmas special on TBN. They played that. Those songs mean a lot to me now. Just because that night, it brought me comfort. And the song was for God is with us. And they kept saying, God is with us. God is with us. It was so good. So that night, we just... It was, it was, it was, it was just a great night. So yeah, I woke up, y'all. When I say I woke up smiling, so my parents can tell you I was smiling so hard. I don't think I smiled that hard in a long. I woke up like I'm alive. I'm breathing. My parents were right here. My little sister downstairs. I can see the sun. I can smell things. I can hear things. I can feel things. Mmm. Ain't God good? 
Yo, oh my gosh, it was so good. It was so powerful. So I didn't have my phone. My phone was still in the car. So I went about three days without my phone. It was basically a three-day fast from everything. I couldn't remember my Instagram password. So I couldn't get on Instagram either. So I was just off of, I was off the map for three days straight. And I was the so happy. I was so happy. Like, I was happy. I spent time with my family. Me and my family did not leave each other's side after that. After that crash, it took us a minute to even separate rooms. Like, we was, we was bunched up. We was, look, where you going? We all going. Okay. Where you, look, where, where, where you about to sit at? You about to sit in the living room? Oh, okay. We were all about to sit in the living room. Sit in the living room, okay? It was so good to put my family closer. It just, it was just, it was just amazing, y'all. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. So after all of this, um, we went to church recently this Sunday. And if you was at Live last Sunday, I don't even have to say much. If y'all were there, I probably don't have to say much right now. That. <laughs> that was something else. But mind y'all, I don't know if the live is going to, I don't know if you're, if you're on here too long, if it's going to cut off. But anyways, y'all. Y'all, when after the crash, like the days I didn't have my phone, I woke up like with revelations. Like I woke up with insight on my life. Like I told my mom, I said, Mom, I think I want to do mission trips. Like I want to go to other countries and go to rehabilitation uh, centers and all of that. Go to prisons, go to all of that and just teach, teach them what I know and just, you know, give them the hope of the Lord and share the spirit of God that I feel, you know, lay hands on the sick. I said, I want to do that. Mom, I want to do that. She looked at me like, Thank you, Jesus, daughter. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. It won't cut off. Okay, good. She said, bad, daughter. We're going to do it. Whatever, whatever, right? So I got excited about that. So remember at the beginning of the live, I told you I went to this lady's conference. Her name was Jenny Weaver, right? And ever since I went to her conference, I've been watching her, like her YouTube stuff. If you go on Instagram right now and look up Jenny Weaver, your life will be changed, by the way. But yeah. So I, I've been listening to her ever since, and she, for some reason, she chose to come to our church on Sunday. She said she wanted to come for the New Year's service. So she came that Sunday after I crashed. Isn't that crazy? So, so we went. Um, so we went to church, and I seen her there, and I just hugged her. I could show the picture when I hugged her. When I hugged, her, I just started crying because she don't know how much she impacted my life. Like she doesn't even know. She doesn't even know. Dang, where's the picture? Hold on. She doesn't even understand. Well, I, I didn't screenshot. I got to save it to my phone. But yeah, my purpose really was activated, y'all. My purpose. Her testimony is, um, oh my God, y'all listen to her testimony? Amazing. So my, long story short, she got on the mic and she ripped us into pieces. As soon as she grabbed that mic, everybody was like, bro, it was like, a like, oh, the power that lady had. I texted it to you. Okay. I just didn't save it to my phone, so I don't know if I can put it on this live. I gotta save it. But I'm gonna post it after this. I'm gonna post this on I'm gonna post it on my story right after I get off a live. But y'all, so why why she's speaking on the mic? She shared her testimony, she did all of that, and I'm just running around in the spirit because it was so good. And I'm behind the stage. Why she find me? She turned around and found me and said, and you as soon as she pointed at me, I was like, oh, oh, oh. anyways. She said, and you, she said, you will preach. She said, you will minister the word of God. She said, you will lay hands on the sick. She said, you will go into prisons. She said, oh my God. She said, everything that the Lord told me after I crashed. She said it right in my face. I'm looking at her like, my knees was actually talking. My knees is getting weak. I'm like, Jesus, I thought I was going to drop to my knees as she's talking. She said, you would do this. You would preach. She said, um, yeah, you would go into prisons. She said, you would heal. She said, you would lay hands on somebody that has cancer and it would be free from cancer. I'm looking at her like, oh, my knees would get weak. And she said something like I activated or something. I activated. I seal it in the name of Jesus. And she put it at me. She said, now, y'all, this lady did not touch me. And I'm a dramatic person, but when it comes to things in the spirit, I don't I only do what I really feel. I only move on the spirit. That lady said, now, my body said, whoosh. That thing flew back, boy. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Lord. She said, 
That lady said, now. Boy, when I tell you, I felt like that same feeling when I went to her conference. It's like electricity. It's like, it's like a, it's strong. It's a strong buzz, but it's called the spirit of the Lord. But, but I thought that through my whole body, on my handshake, I'm on the floor like, whoa. Boy, it was something was activated. I'm like, woo! I was like, yes, sir. I was waiting on this. Sorry. Calm down. But boy, that was powerful. So after that, as soon as he said, hey, boy. You about to leave? No, <laughs> now. So, y'all, he's like, yeah. So I felt the spirit. I felt it activated. Um, for real, for real. And right after that, as soon as that happened, um, my dad's talking, and this man just comes out in the middle aisle, and his whole bon his whole body is like, like deformed, like it's twisting. And girl, don't calm down. Period. Period. Is this live on YouTube? I'm gonna post this on YouTube as soon as I get off. I'm posting it on my channel, Taylor TV. I put the link in my bio. But the church service, yeah, the church service. Oh, the church service online. Oh. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I'm gonna ask my dad for y'all, but. I'm sorry, I'm gonna calm down for real. So I, his body was like twisting all of that. And my dad was like, Well, he said, Let's go. If you need healing right now, come to the front. You can see me, Christian. <laughs> come to the front right now. I saw it. I saw it. You saw it? Yay! He saw he saw the live on he saw me on his phone. It's so funny. Yes, how can you please let the heat off my feel like? I thought it was just because I was in the spirit, Mom. I ain't know. Why the heat on, y'all? They were trying to take me out. woo -hoo! But yeah, y'all. So yeah, it started being all these people coming up for deliverance and healing. And my dad was like, ministers, come lay hands. And I was just looking. I was just hyped to see what God was about to do. And my dad was like, Austin, come on. I was like, no, I didn't back up. I actually jumped. <laughs> I ran. When he said, come on, I said, I'm coming. Boy, I jumped over that stage real quick. I said, look, what you who? Who? Which one got? Who got? What? Finally, y'all. That was he is trying to take me out again. He keep losing. Anyway, y'all. So I started. So I found this one lady. I said I would just speak. I don't even know what I said. The Lord helped me. The lady. I felt her. I felt the freedom. I just felt she was breaking down. I was like, woo. I said, oh yeah, oh yeah. I can do this. I can do this. Austin says, say no more. Boy, I jumped across that stage. I don't think y'all get it. <laughs> I leaked. I said, look. <laughs> I flew right, Shalisa. I was gone. I said, look, let's go. Man, I felt people be free. I prayed for my sister, Lorraine. I was just rocking, hugging her. Boy, the spirit of God was there. The spirit of God was there. Boy, I said, say less. That's, oh, that's what you want me to do. I hear you, Lord. Let's go. Boy. Yeah, y'all. I found my calling. I found my purpose. The Lord delivered me through a crash. Where do you hear that at? Things that I was struggling with, bro, that I could not like get off of. Bro, after that crash, it wasn't even a struggle anymore. I call it the glorious crash. That's the first time I felt like I actually experienced his glory. His glory was over me. I was wrapped in his glory. Boy, 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 boy. I don't think y'all get it. No, he will. What? So, yeah, y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all, let's just take a moment to thank him for his keeping power, for his everlasting power. For his love, for him being a promise keeper, like you the almighty God, how you still keeping these little promises with us little humans? Like, how you still even care that much after all these years, after all the times I done turned on you, after all the times you told me don't do this, don't do that, and I did it. And you still choose to just to keep me. Okay. I see, okay, okay, okay. You got me like that, God. Watch how I got you now. I owe you. My life. I owe you my life. I owe you my life. I was supposed to be dead. I wasn't supposed to have life anymore. I owe you my life. I wasn't supposed to breathe anymore. I wasn't supposed to smile ever again. I owe you my life. I wasn't supposed to walk 
ever again. I wasn't supposed to sing his praises ever again. I wasn't supposed to dance ever again, y'all. I wasn't supposed to dance again. Y'all would have never seen me behind my dad doing the get up move again. That's what the devil wanted. He wanted all of that gone, y'all. I owe him my life. And you do too, y'all. Y'all owe him your life. He's keeping you every single day. Every time you get on a roll, he's keeping you. Every time you go on a plane, he's keeping you. Every time you go to bed and wake back up, he's keeping you. He didn't let demons take your mind and your rest. He's keeping you. When you're outside of his will, he's keeping you. Mm. And you don't want to give him your life? What's up with that? That says a lot. Let's, 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 let's try our hardest this year, 2023. Let's try our hardest this year to just give him our life. Like, it sounds simple, but let's try to like, give him your life means give him your feelings, give him your emotions, give him your thoughts. Like when that other thoughts come, say, I choose his will and not my will. Give him your thoughts, give him your choices. Give him your choices because you always know. You always know the right choice because all of us got the spirit of God. We always know what's right because you know how you're on the way to something. Your stomach just turning and you don't feel, boy, that's, that's that spirit of God saying, I don't think you should go. So let's try to choose that this time, okay? Because y'all don't want to be hanging upside down in the car wishing. Like as I'm flipping, I was wishing like, dang, I should have never did this. Dang, I should have never did that. I'm wishing, y'all. I'm wishing. I'm just like, oh, not saying it's because of that. No, it's not because of that because God is forgiving. Every morning when you wake up, you're in his grace. So don't think, oh, if I do this, I'm going to end up upside down, hanging outside a car. No. But just remember that he's keeping you from that. I got to be up at 5 a.m. Oh, my God. Go to bed, Shalisa. I'm going to post it live on my Instagram. But yes, who wouldn't serve a God like this? Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? People who into witchcraft and all that, y'all got to make certain, certain sacrifices. Y'all got to give this up. And the devil, he take this from you. When you do this for him, he going to take this. And you gonna, he going to give you this. But then when he give you that, he going to take this. And then he going to make sure you get that job. Then he going to get your daughter sick. And then, no. The God I serve. <laughs> He's a keeper, y'all. And every day when you wake up, you're walking in his grace. So I want all of y'all to remember that. I was on here for almost an hour now. So I think I should get off soon. But yeah, y'all. I don't, I don't think I got no questions. In the, no, no questions in the question box. But yeah, y'all. So the heat is on in here. I feel like I'm about to pass out. But y'all, God is a keeper. God is a keeper, and he'll keep you, and I pray his supernatural protection over everybody on this live, that no weapon for and against anybody on this live shall prosper, and we know that, we know that you're the God of everything, we know that even demons answer to you, the devil can't even do nothing without you allowing it first, I know it might sound like, dang, so he allowed all this, yeah, yeah, he is allowing all of this because if he ain't allowed for that to happen, I will not be where I am right now. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because I'm a little stubborn one. OK, stubborn Christians, you know, I love the Lord. Well, I love him, but I'm a little stubborn. So, yes, he allowed it for a reason. And thank you, Jesus. OK, but yeah, y'all, I pray his supernatural covering over you guys. Um, stay in your word. Um, stay prayed up. Every time you get in a car and leave your house, stay for a connection. Look at him mad. It's all right, devil. I'm about to get off, little pump. But yeah, uh, <laughs> every time you leave your house, at least say thank you, Jesus, for your protection. At least, bro. Cover your kids. Parents, cover your kids. Kids, cover your parents. When your parents leave the house, say, Lord, cover them with your blood. Parents, do prayer too. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I love y'all so much. And I will be posting this on my YouTube, Taylor TV. It will be on here so you guys can comment and stuff on there. He is a little punk. And don't, don't ever make him feel like he's bigger and better than you because you got the spirit of God in you. And them demons are scared. They're terrified. Friend, what's up, friend? Yo, 
Them demons are terrified. So you better call that devil a little punk. He ain't nothing. He flipped me. Y'all got that car with a scratch. I got a little scratch. I probably can't even see it. I got a little. Ooh, I can't even stand up. It's so hot. I got a little scratch. Can't even see it. I got a little scratch. Yeah, okay. He's a little punk. So, yeah. Whenever you feel an attack, feeling tormented, just renounce that spirit because you have the power inside of you. You have the almighty father. You have his spirit inside of you. The man who created the sky. When you look up and see that beautiful sunset, the man that created, created them huge elephants and them huge giraffes and all the beautiful ginormous whales in the ocean. That God is right here, right here. So what would you be scared of a little demon for? Yeah, okay. Renounce that. That's dead. Amen? Amen. Sure. That's dead. Lil Punk is crazy. <laughs> Cause he gonna try to get all in my stuff. Like, you try to get, like. Hold on, let me see. I got a question. You should have a young. When will you speak at your church? Very soon, you should have a young Adele conference. That's what I'm planning right now. You hear my dad in the background? Oh, Lord. Um, yeah, I'm planning a youth and young Adele conference, so y'all will see that. Very soon, and it's gonna be a test of. It's gonna be called "I Am Living Proof," and it's gonna be about. You already know. Everybody gonna share their testimony. We all gonna love on each other. We all gonna get free together. There will be deliverance. There will be songs of the Lord. All of that. I'm coming to Austin Church. Period, y'all. You coming? Hey, I'll let people know beforehand because I want y'all to fly out. I want all that. I want it to be big because we are gonna celebrate together. This miracle, we're gonna celebrate. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. All things new, Gabby. You already, girl, you really know all things new. You feel me? And it's crazy how my dad dropped that album this year. And I'm a whole brand new person. Literally. Like, all things new. It's been every part of my life is new. I switched my room. Everything is new. Y'all don't even get it. Y'all don't get it. I'm, somebody say live. <laughs> Y'all funny. I want to fly over there as a church. You should. A miracle celebration. Y'all want to celebrate with my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. I just want all of us to be in there like, hey, hey, ah, hey, 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 hey. And just watch the devil get madder. It's so fun. <laughs> just watch him piss. Mm, hey, 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 hey. So, yeah. I don't know if any of y'all are against tattoos or anything, but... When I um got an done. They clapping for me. Thank you. It's not done. My, I'm still on. <laughs> it just blanked off. But I just want to show y'all that I got a, the same one as my dad it says, not my own. A reminder to myself that I am not my own. And this is the temple of the Lord and his dwelling place. And no, I'm about to tell you loud. It's okay. <laughs> I'll just mess with you. But yeah, y'all, I just wanted to show y'all that I got that reminder right here. So every time y'all see me, y'all gonna see that and y'all gonna know that this is the Lord's dwelling place. And that's about it. I live for him now. My whole life is for him. And I owe him that. And I am very much honored to be able to live for him. And I feel like all of you guys should follow, uh, you know, the same advice and do the same thing this year. At least try your hardest, you know? So thank you, Jesus! And I'm off of here. I love y'all. And I will see y'all next time. I'm going to start going live more. But this will be on my YouTube page, Taylor TV. I love you guys. God bless you guys. The blood cover you guys, huh? Right? I know. Soon I'm going to do, I'm gonna do another live, y'all. I am for sure. But yeah, the blood cover you guys. I love you guys. And if you have any more questions, you know, about anything, about salvation, about how it is being a young person walking with Christ and not feeling like an outcast and not feeling weird, you know, if you want to talk about it, my DMs are open. And I'm down to talk because I dedicate my life to him. Thank you, Jesus. And thank y'all so much. I love y'all too so, 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 so much. No problem, y'all. Thank y'all for listening. Y'all sat on here. Y'all listen to me. Y'all my new family. I love you too so, so much. I love y'all too, man. Y'all my family. I feel special. 
And I feel loved. And I, oh, I felt every single person's prayer, by the way. If you prayed for me during this, I literally felt the prayer. And I appreciate it. And I will never, ever, ever, ever forget it. I appreciate you guys. Let us see more of this thing. Say, I got you, Bart. I'll be on live more. But God bless you all. And let the spirit into your heart. In the name of Jesus. I'm out of here, y'all. Bye.